People in the gig economy should have the same rights as everybody else and they should have them from day one. So that means sick pay, it means maternity and paternity leave, it means the right to have a timetable if, if their work is going to come to an end, if your work is going to be terminated and your employer should give you notice of that. I don't think it's asking for the earth. But once employers have to pay workers properly and give them proper rights, they'll be laying people off in order to afford it. Do you know that argument has been put forward for every trade union reform ever brought forward? Look at what happened on the minimum wage. They said, you know, minimum wage shock horror, people would lose their jobs, actually employment increased. Our view is this, look, what's come out of all the various independent reports is that for the first time in our national income, more is going to shareholders than workers, the real wealth creators. And all we're saying is this is out of balance, this is out of kilter. What we want to do is introduce rights which will redress some of that balance, which I think this does. The question then is really whether you are in a position mm. to win an election and, and pay for this and do it. Yeah. And that question is very much in the air, not least because you appear to be obscure about Brexit. Brexit is one of those issues. Um, it's divided the country. I think the country is still split down the middle. And so what we're saying is, is that look, we have to respect the referendum but we need to get the best deal to protect jobs and the economy as we can. We don't think the Conservatives can do that. The best way of sorting that out is let's have a general election. Do you honestly believe that workers outside the EU, in a Britain that isn't a member, will be better off than they are now? Not the way in which it's been negotiated by this government, certainly not. That's why we're saying... Well, in any way? Well, I think the way in which we're approaching it is exactly the right one, how we bring the country back together. So we're saying we want, a, we want to respect the referendum, negotiate a Brexit which will protect the jobs and the economy. That means we will have, if you like, a relationship with Europe that will, with them, work through how we tackle the problems together but we do it in our own way. So That sounds remarkably like Chequers. No, not at all. We've said very clearly we want a customs union. The Tories don't want a customs union. We think a customs union will give that, us that tariff-free access and solve the issue around the Northern Ireland border. Our, we campaigned on the basis of Remain reform. We lost that argument. So what we're looking for now on, is that slogan, another Europe is possible, a new relationship. Politics is this. If we don't respect the referendum result, We've got the potential then of the rise of UKIP again and the right. I don't want the country divided again. Every opinion poll is telling us now, actually, the country is still split down the middle. Someone's got to bring the country back together again, and that's the Labour. The Labour Party is the only people who can do that. I want to avoid, therefore, the potential of UKIP rising again, and even further to the right, exercising a role within our society. In, so that way, this is about a traditional British compromise. You talk to the percentage that won the vote, you don't talk to the no, we told, we're trying to No, we're trying to bring no, everyone the, together. The people who lost, are, uh, like the TUC, <clears throat> believe that leaving Europe is a disaster. Well, look, you take the TUC's position this week. It's virtually the same as ours. What they want, and the words they're using, is to respect the referendum result. But on the deal, they're saying very, very clear there needs to be a proper debate and they prefer a general election like us and are keeping all options on the table like us, including a people's vote. This is a blurred message though, isn't it? No, I mean, I it's very it hard no. to understand what Labour's position is. The, the Tories are very clear. They set out their own plan at Chequers. The, the it Tories may be, are clear. But they have at least issued a policy. John, you're having you a haven't laugh, issued a policy. You? you are having a no, laugh. No, you're telling me the Tories are clear. The Tories are in complete and absolute disarray. I'm not Our arguing about quite, that, but they do have well, let a me take plan you it which again. is both rejected <laughs> and accepted. John, let me take you through it again. Respect the referendum. Have a customs union. A relationship with the single market which gives us access. Making sure we're working on a cooperative base and collaborative basis for the, with the rest of Europe for the long term future. That's our policy and I think that's the policy that the majority of the population in this country will support and will bring them together. Whoever negotiates it, do the British people deserve the right to vet it before they approve it? Well, that's what we've said. We believe a general election should take place. But not a second but, referendum. Well, we've kept you the swear by no, the first no, referendum, but you're not prepared to talk about the second kept, one. We've kept the option on the table of a people's vote, and we'll determine this as things go on. But that's all part of the blur, isn't no, it? No, it isn't. We're keeping yeah. options open. Well, we sort people of might have a that. second referendum. We might not. <laughs> people need to no, know. They need to know clearly we want a general election. This has been clouded in the last two months by the anti-Semitism debate yes, in the party. Has. You are trying to shape the leadership of this party and get it back into business. But at the same time, these last two months 
have been no, a terrible been condemnation of Labour leadership. No, they've not Labour been Labour leadership, it's been a shambles. No, 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 I disagree with you. We've had to, we've gone through a very difficult period. Yeah, you learn lessons, things might have been done quicker. However, you learn those lessons and you move on. And where What's a subject to have to learn lessons about? Anti-Semitism. That's why it was heartrending to be accused of any form of, anti, uh, any form of racism. But actually, the anti-Semitism issue is much more complex than any of us realise as well. And it isn't just with it, but this is in society overall. And we, we, as a society, all of us, in the media, in politics, in the wider community, have all got to recognise that this is an issue we've got to address, and we're going to lead that. If you do get into power, will Jeremy Corbyn make good Prime Minister? I think it'd be brilliant. You, people have underestimated Jeremy's abilities in terms of just a, what an eye for detail that he's got, sound judgment. And also, I believe, advocacy, but he advocates in a different way. He brings people together. But the Jeremy Corbyn we've been watching in the last two months has not demonstrated clever leadership over the anti-Semitism disaster. Well, it's a tough issue, isn't it? And we've, we've learned some tough lessons, but, but we are where we are. What a crazy issue to have in play when the, mo the biggest decision facing a Britain uh, since the Second World War is in play. Don't that think, surely I is agree. the priority. I agree. Brexit, Brexit, just because, Brexit. Look, just because the anti-Semitism issue was dominating the media, don't think the work on Brexit wasn't going on. Don't think it was neglected in any way. The day-to-day -day business of opposition and preparation for government has been going on. John McDonnell, thank you very much for talking Thanks to us. Thanks a lot.